Alex. Hi, Karen. Calvin. Good morning, and uh, welcome Good morning. to the yeah redefined uh, 2021. Um, uh, it's great to have you here, and uh, you know to kick off, uh, could you maybe just quickly sort of describe uh, your journey into crypto, introduce yourself, and describe your journey into crypto. Awesome. So, hi everyone. My name is Alex Salnikov. I'm co-founder and head of product at Variable. Uh, I know how many of you have seen me already. I, I try to be active <laughs> on on conferences and stuff. Right. So, uh, my journey to crypto has been quite long, actually. Um, I joined the revolution in 2012. Uh, that was a long time ago. Uh, back then, you couldn't. You could only like buy and sell Bitcoin. But the idea, the promise of the new monetary system coming to the world was just so big that they couldn't resist. I, I, I got a full convert as soon as I read the Bitcoin white paper. And after that, I've been doing project after project in the cryptocurrency area. Um, We've done numerous stuff like exchanges, trading robots, uh, ERC20 issuance platforms. When Ethereum kicked off, that was even even a bigger promise because programmable money. What if you could have, I don't know, like like a Revolut account with dollars and euros and then a Forex and then another one with your broker, but all of that accessible through API in a transactional manner. So like I found my USD account, I convert that to another stable coin or uh, then I deposit, deposit that to compound. So uh, composability of the system, uh, programmability, it, it's all been just super great. So never, never left the space. And now we're doing the same with NFTs at Rarible over almost two years now. That's, that's, that's awesome. And, uh, for someone who's been in the space for so long, can you talk about you know what um, gave you the conviction uh, to start you know Rarible, um, and and you know I guess you were one of the earliest platforms. You know what gave you that conviction that NFTs and, and gaming and digital art and so on uh, was going to blossom on the blockchain? Yeah, uh, I remember exact moment actually. Uh, that was 2018 post ICO depression era uh, <laughs> in the blockchain space, right? Yep. Everyone was kind of on a downtrend uh, the prices are low. Uh, and after, in, in 2017, I almost stopped following the news because like half of them was just so out of this reality. Like a lot of promises, nothing delivered, a lot of like stuff going on, a lot of buzz. It was super hard to filter useful stuff through all of that. And I almost stopped looking. And a year later, uh, I came back, I subscribed to like 10 newsletters, uh, ISHAP, Week in Ethereum, uh, Bankless. All of those newsletters are great. If you're following the space, it's just must read. And I started uh, following the news there, and suddenly I realized that almost as Ethereum isn't useless anymore, you can do so much more than just issue a token. Right. Uh, you can connect a wallet. You don't need to install Mist that would download 200 gigabytes of data to your computer in order to use all of it. Um, Basically, wallets became is, uh, industry standard. Wallet Connect, Fortmatic, that allows you to create a new wallet just with your email and password. And I understood that it's finally ready, not for the, the super geeks, but, but for a broader audience uh, to use crypto. You can, it, it's still it's still difficult, but at least you can do it now because before it was just impossible. Yes, I I, I want ever I know, suggested any of my friends to download this Ethereum wallet and stuff. But now with MetaMask, yeah, it's still hard, but you can do it. And uh, we, we were thinking about a broader audience and the broader audience doesn't necessarily wants to to use money in the in, in the crypto because I don't know I've onboarded a lot of people to blockchain and half of them were like, well, I have a credit card, that's fine to me. I don't need anything else. 
but the broader audience what the broader audience often wants is joy and fun and engagement in interacting they want a beautiful platform that you're using even you don't have to use it you don't need to use it but you just do it because because you love interacting with that and that that gave us the entrance to the nft world since it's so easy understandable like it's great that simple NFT is a digital item that you have on your wallet. Everyone can understand that it's visual. A lot of people are like purely visual uh, in in their perceivement of information. So it all like fits together in a puzzle that we can now use Ethereum. It's more or less simple. We want to fun and joy, and that's why we created Variable uh, as a, as a simple platform to have fun and joy. Great. Yeah. No, I, I think I think that's that's the the way to get adoption, right? Um, yeah, to bring people fun and joy. And uh, speaking of that, you know, if you look at the NFT marketplace today, right? I mean, it's it's come a long way clearly uh, compared to uh, you know two three years ago. But what, what what how do you how would you describe you know where we are sort of in that adoption cycle and what are some of the challenges that uh, that the industry still faces to to onboard more users? Yeah. So. Uh, I would I would name the current status as uh, a little bit post first hype uh, cooldown. So in March we've seen so at first it was unclear whether the NFTs are a market at all. Like there there was uh, not a lot of activity, but somebody felt that it's coming that that the NFT is getting traction, and it was exponential. It felt slow. Uh, but in March, we've seen this boom when every major media, everyone in the world heard an NFT. If you listen to any uh, any media that that is at least somehow tech um, tech connected, so we've seen this, and everybody understood that NFTs are a great market, and everybody tried the NFTs. So there, was, I think, I don't like how many how many brands how many big companies how many just individuals creators tried to create their first nfts they tried like a lot of them sold something and earned some money a lot of them didn't and there was this discovery phase so now everyone knows about nft and 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 the market is definitely trying to figure out what is the long-term strategy for nft what are the long-term fundamental bringing value projects inside the NFT space. Like what should be a collection to last several years like CryptoPunks did? What what are these long-term NFT projects that would be forever with us? Because that's that's a common problem with the NFT is that they, they get um, hyped. I mean, the particular items that they get hyped and then they, they, then they got forgotten. So I think, uh, yeah, this long-term exploration is what's happening right now. Got it. And you know, for Rarible, obviously, um, you are a relatively young company, uh, but you've seen, you know, exponential growth. And um, you know, how would you sort of, uh, you know, what what factors would you contribute? You know, would you say contributed to the growth? And what is your longer-term vision for for Rarible? Yep. Uh, the factors that mostly contributed to, to the growth is a combination of a well-created product. Basically, uh, our our head of design is super great. The visual aspect of the product is, is sleek and, and fun. Mm -hmm. uh, and we had like seven months of continuous iterations, like what should we do better in order for the project to be better? Like at, let's add leaderboard, let's add multiple minting, let's add the royalties. We've been listening to community, community helped us a lot. Um, the ideas are probably the second most important factors. The, the initial idea was let's make it democratized. Uh, everyone can can mint NFTs. That was a powerful idea that uh, got adopted by uh, various like the most uh, I don't know the most uh, crypto people that are that believe in 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 these ideas. Uh, then there was a liquidity mining program that helped a lot. Um, basically, I know some media said like variable turned uh, one of the most popular marketplaces overnight. Uh, 
it helped a lot yes we, when we started rewarding with the governance tokens of decentralization and then probably the connection of nfts with DeFi when we uh, helped the your nft insurance project to uh, to be easily accessible and wearable so yeah basically there is nothing particularly um outstanding is just the hard work on, on the product week after week got it got it and um you know obviously over the last um, uh three months also i mean the crypto market sort of gone into a downturn a pretty a pretty sharp correction and um you know what are you seeing your in, on on the platform in terms of sort of user statistics are you guys you know seeing a similar sort of uh, drop off in activity and interest, or has the level of interest in NFTs continue to stay high? You know, can you talk about what's uh, what are some of the things that you're seeing in terms of you know user behavior and, and adoption? Yeah, definitely. So uh, the peak was in March. In terms of the users, we've experienced um, somewhat eight million users in traffic, according to similar web. And now that's down somewhat three times. So I would say that the NFTs got hit by that downturn in market a little bit less than the DeFi and cryptocurrency markets. They they usually been they're usually being corrected much more. Uh, but we need to remember that the march was absolutely insane i know all of my friends told me about nfts like whether i should launch and <laughs> all sorts of things like that so yeah. I, I would say we, we we see the level of activity much bigger than in the beginning of 2021 mm -hmm. uh when the, that just started so overall the market continues to to grow right and what about sort of in terms of um these nft creations right um have you seen uh you know much interest from mainstream artists and, and celebrities or influencers and i guess brands as well you know to engage with with you guys and what are some of the things that they are excited about creating yeah that that is kind of connected to your previous question about the long-term strategy for wearable and this is exactly what we see we, we see like every one of my known digital artists from from my network uh has entered the space they they try to create an item they not yet figure it out some some of them like create not collectibles but but some uh other type of uh, creations so it's not so easy for them uh, but it's definitely on everyone's radar every every mainstream uh, media every mainstream celebrity they, they heard their managers reached out to wearable they are all like now entering the space and the next like year of development would be would be pivotal for understanding what are the nft value propositions for a mainstream media like uh we need to better custodian wallets like taurus or fortmatic for them to be able to create their first wallet without a hurdle we need better credit card payments we need scalability solution absence of that uh, gas fees nonsense people don't really understand why do i need to pay 50 dollars to me in the night I mean, it's just so crazy for them like facebook is free instagram is free everything is free and i need to pay fifty dollars it's a lot for the creator that uh because you need to run experiments you need you need to make one thing after another to see what's working what's not and you need to pay every time but yeah mainstream mainstream adoption is is our like long-term strategy and what we see right now happening on the market right and speaking of sort of minting fees um how are you addressing that problem you know, are you starting to look into other chains or layer two solutions? You know, what are some of the things that you're thinking about? Yeah, we've been researching this space and actively looking at it over more than a year now. So mm -hmm. we've talked to every layer two solution out there. We understood what are the core problems and challenges and and improvements that are brought by these layer two solutions and 
Uh, our strategy is multi-chain. We're, we're deploying to EVM compatible, compatible chains one by one. Uh, we'll probably come on Polygon soon. Uh, the previous session was uh, covering a lot of that. Uh, we've partnered with Flow uh, recently. At the same time, we announced our round uh, from from Bandrock. So, yeah, mainstream adoption comes with with better like infrastructure, better blockchains, more efficient in terms of energy consumption and all sorts of things like that. Right. And, and talking about sort of building on Flow, is there something more to the partnership than than just sort of building on, on top of Flow? Because you made an announcement oh. about that. <laughs> uh, we're building right now on Flow. Yeah, that's, that's what happens. There is the cost of adoption is relatively high because they don't have EVM. Uh, they have all another set of tools. They have another language. Just a second. They have another language of smart contracts. Uh, they even have another architecture of, of the of the virtual machine that the smart contracts get uh, executed. Um, but on the on the other hand, they, they have better nodes. You don't need Infura to to adopt Flow. So our strategy is to connect all the blockchains in inside one marketplace. So you, at some point, you'll see just all the items from different chains in, together, and you need to connect the wallet and, and purchase one of them. And you know, with regards to sort of NFTs at the moment, it's a lot of sort of um, like digital art, right? And to some extent, we're starting to see some of the gaming applications with NFTs in it. Um, what are some of the areas that you think the NFT market will naturally sort of expand to in the coming one or two years? What What are some of the things that we're not seeing yet, or not seeing so much of yet in, in terms of NFT? In application that, that, that could emerge. Yeah, uh, I think about this a lot. Definitely, crypto art was on uh, on 2020 and 2021 break doors a lot. Uh, we see now much less activity in that uh, in that segment. Um, probably there is a natural market cycle. Some somebody needs needs to earn money uh, to kickstart the next phase on on the items that they bought uh, the next big segment would probably be gaming mm -hmm. uh, games are a little bit slower in terms of development but the open economy the metaverse is is so promising uh, we've seen so far the digital land uh, segment doing quite well, Decentraland, Crypto Voxel, Somnium Space, but they're relatively uh, narrow audience because it's, it's, it's not cheap to, to have some of those uh, in, in your portfolio. So we'll see a lot more, more in-game assets interoperable between the games. This is the big one, and the NFT cross DeFi, Uniswap version three showed us just one aspect of how can DeFi projects interact with NFTs. Just representing something as NFT makes it much more uh, accessible and understandable for a user. But we haven't seen yet a good DeFi assets represented as NFT. For example, something that is singular by nature, um, like a, a CDP or any other just asset uh, that is purely like financial and represented as NFT. So we haven't seen yet this. Got it. And recently, I saw as well. Um, I mean, obviously, XC Infinity has you know sort of. Uh, had amazing, you know, the, the token price has gone up a lot, but besides the token price, I mean, if you look at the, uh, you know, user statistics, I mean, that's just sort of been a hockey stick the, the last, uh, you know, couple of months. And um, uh, so you think, uh, so do you think that's something that we're going to see sort of replicated across um, these multiple, uh, I guess, NFT platforms as well as games? Um, 
and uh, and also you know what do you think about sort of this new concept of uh, play to earn? I think we've just witnessed the power of the open economy. Mm -hmm. Usually inside the game, uh, if you um, you could earn money in previous games, play to earn, for example, in Steam. A lot of people are selling their items. They're, they're finding cheap items. They're playing to to get some loot boxes to, to find items. But you can't really withdraw money. You can only spend those, that money uh, on another game. So it's a closed economy. And as soon as it gets popular, Steam just issues new items, right? And and you spend that on on the new things inside the same economy. So play to earn wasn't really accessible before. Uh, in the traditional world, it, it has a lot of it has a lot of concerns like regulation because uh, I'm pretty sure Steam would be happy to open it up a little. Um, so now in crypto, we have this play to earn. It, it would surely be replicated. I think replication works everywhere. Uh, really great. Uh, but some of these replicas would be just direct. Let's let's create another game like Axie Non-Infinity uh, or something like that. Yeah. Uh, but we would see the true innovation in that space as well. And I think the real boom will be when several of those innovative games would connect their economies and allow cross-game interactions. Uh, that would be the real power. Right. And recently as well, I, I, I saw uh, something interesting um, in the world of NFTs called INFTs, right? intelligent NFTs. Um, because you know, when I talk to NFTs, talk about NFTs to, to, to friends, you know, the common sort of pushback I get is, you know, why would I want a digital version of a piece of art? You know, why would I want to keep it in my phone? You know, I'd rather have a physical version where I can sort of hang at home and everybody can see it, you know, there's, you know, NFT as a digital representation of something physical doesn't add anything to, you know, to, to, to the collectible. Uh, but I, I thought sort of intelligent NFTs was interesting because, you know, suddenly the piece of art that was sort of static, you know, can now sort of interact with you and sort of have its own sort of intelligence. Um, you know, just curious, you know, what, what your thoughts are and whether you see anything interesting um, as well. Definitely, the more utility the NFT has, it, it, the better it is. So if you can, if you can play with your NFT in a game, or if you can use it in the in the metaverse, you can exhibit that. You, you can show it to your friends. Uh, you can post it to your Twitter profile. I know why this collectible has been so so hard because you, you put that on on your Twitter avatar, and and everybody can see you from from a distance. Let's say. So the more utility there is, the better. Uh, with with the interactive NFTs, um, it's a little bit harder in terms of wallets. They need to, to all adopt this functionality of interacting and uh, stuff. But I'm definitely in for the for the innovation experimentation. It's amazing. And um, sort of. You know, coming back to the topic of uh, variable again, um, uh, you know, I, I know that, that uh, you recently sort of did a pretty sizable Series A round. Um, could you talk a little bit about, uh, you know, what are you doing with uh, the capital that's been raised? Uh, and how do you, you know, how do you plan to accelerate the development with with that, you know, fresh capital injection? Variable undergoes a massive scaling internally and externally. Uh, we've, we've got a lot of like new product teams, uh, marketing people, biz dev people. We're entering the classic, the classic stage of growth in the startup when, when we already have revenue, revenue is doing great, and now we need to expand this, we need to grow this, we need more clients, and we definitely need to realize, uh, to implement our vision of mainstream adoption. So, and there is a lot needs to be done because previously, like a lot of crypto native people are willing to compromise on the product. They're okay. It's, it's crypto. We are here for revolution. We can uh, make more clicks in order to access what we want. We can wait a, a day to, until our funds from the bank account would let the exchange. So a lot of things, a lot of things, uh, uh, a lot of things needs to be done um, 
better custodian wallets, better credit card adoption. Yeah, we're, we're to expand the team basically uh, to cover all those things. Got it. And, um, you know, earlier we talked about sort of uh, the power of an open economy, about decentralization. Um, can you talk a little, bit, a little bit about, you know, Redable DAO? And, you know, what are your thoughts about sort of decentralizing, you know, the platform in the coming years? Yeah. Uh, this is a great topic. This has been one of the great success of Rarible, the decentralization. Um, now we have finally figured out how it really should look like because it was always hard to balance between like uh, we need fast iteration on the marketplace product. Uh, we need we, we can't run a proposal to change uh, the product. It takes too long to process. Uh, but at the same time, the core infrastructure, the core uh, part of, of smart contracts, uh, everything concerns blockchain, needs to be super resilient and safe and audited. And uh, the community needs to be sure that nothing would go wrong. Uh, we have a lot of innovation on, on the blockchain side as well. There are like upgradable smart contracts that allow you to add new features every time. And in the same time, that uh, that creates some, I don't know, uncertainties in 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 the the users adopting this. Like, would that change the way I don't want it to? And we learned a lot. We are distributing our governance token to users, to to creators of the platform, and it's hard for them to participate in governance. It's 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 too too long of a process. You need to be on a community calls. You need to read like economic proposal think a lot about that so the the more the model we are coming to is the protocol variable protocol that is pre-released not yet announced fully uh, on which uh, other marketplaces and rarible.com is one of the marketplaces that is building on top of variable protocol so variable protocol directly governed by the DAO uh, governed by token holders uh, super decentralized and Rarible.com is more like a swift and, and fast company that can work on top. Uh, yeah, this is the model we're coming to. That's great to hear. And, uh, you know, we certainly look forward to, uh, you know, further developments on that front. Um, in the interest of time, uh, Alex, I, I want to thank you again for sort of coming here to speak with us about Rarible and the NFT market. Uh, I learned a lot, had a lot of fun talking to you and uh, you know, I'm sure the uh, people who have been listening in uh, will uh, you know, similarly find it uh, helpful. Thank you, Calvin. Thank you for having me. If you want to check something, check out Rarible, DAO, Twitter and Discord. There has been so many activities is the next big thing. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you.